In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a notification bell, which is fairly similar to how the YouTube bell icon works. We're going to go through this step by step so you can follow along and do it for yourselves. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where I cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So this video is actually inspired by another YouTube creator, Bass from How to Power BI, and has created a pretty genius solution in creating some notification system within your actual report. So let's say you have a report and you have made some new changes to the reports that you want to highlight to your users. You want to add something like a notification icon to show what has changed since they last visited. And while you can have all of these updates in a documentation, it's fairly easy to see what has changed if these updates are integrated directly in the reports themselves. So first I'm going to show you how the bell icon looks like. So this is basically a finished version of the notification bell icon that we'll implement in Power BI today. So as you can see, there is a bell icon showing us that there are three updates. So if you click it, we'll do control click because we're in Power BI Desktop. It will just bring up this window here, which gives us what's changed, when that was changed, what kind of update it was. You'll see a history of all the other updates there, as well as highlighting the new updates since they last visited. So this is very reminiscent to kind of how the notification bell icon in YouTube works. So that's what we're going to try and emulate today. So if you click the bell icon again, it just brings it back to this page. So let's start with a basic report here, which I have created without the sort of bell icon system yet. We have some information here about some grocery goods, their different categories and their historical sales, but that's not too important. Let's focus on just bringing in the updates into this report file. And the first thing that you'll need is the actual updates data. And at the moment, what I've done is I've put it in a, an updates table. So this updates table is actually fairly simple. It has just a list of when those updates are added, the author, what the type of updates are and the status if they are new or old. So this is basically what we'll use in our calculations to determine if that update needs to be highlighted, if it's new or if it's old and it should just be as part of the list. So the first thing that we'll need to do is we'll need to insert the bell icon buttons. So I've already prepared some icons for us to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert an empty or a blank button here. We're going to change some of its properties, such as its icon to use a custom icon. We're going to bring in the bell icon that I've created here, which will be the default bell icon that we'll be using. Just make sure that it's aligned to the center. And we will put it here on the right hand side. The next thing that we'll need to create is the actual notification window where it's the window that pops up when you click the notification bell icon. So to do that, it's going to be a combination of a few things. So we're going to use the shapes icon here just to bring it up Create something simple like this. We'll give it a rounded corner, maybe just 5%. Give it a color and I wanted to use the same color as this. Okay, so we'll just adjust a few things here. We'll change the color, for example. Let's adjust the border, make it a little bit more prominent like this. Yep. So maybe just make it a little bit smaller. And yep, so now that the shape is done, let's insert a few other things here. I'm going to insert a text, which will be just a static text box that we will add at the top just to give a title what's new just make it white to 
2024 like this. Great. And then the next thing that we want to add is a table. So the table is what will show the updates. So we'll just take it from the updates table that we've created here. So we'll use date update, date, date added and updates just to keep it simple. Just plop it in here. We'll make this a little bit smaller in width. Just gonna disable auto width just so that it doesn't automatically adjust. I'm also gonna add some padding here on the rows so that they are a little bit more spaced out, something like this. Just make sure that they're the same size or within this box that we've created. And if it's too big or there's too many updates, we will just rely on the scroll bar here to see all of those different updates. And then we'll update the coloring of this whole table itself. So I'm just going to change the color here. We'll remove the header icons. We'll remove the grid lines. The text colors, we'll all make them white. And then the color of the background will be the same color as our, as our box here. So border here will be white. And then values. Let's see. We'll need to update the column headers as well which uh, let me see where I can find it. Here we go. White and like this. And we'll make it bold so that it's a little bit, it's obvious that this is the column header section. Great. So let's also adjust how this is sorted because we want to always show the most latest updates in here and also highlight any of the updates that are actually new. So for this functionality, we'll use the tables uh, cell elements property, which allows you to change the background color based on certain values. So we're gonna just enable background color here and we'll set this based in rules. From the update status column, we're just gonna say if it's new and if it's old, if it's new, we want to use a different color altogether. So we'll use this color, just the blue. And if it's old, we'll use the same color as the text, uh, as, as the background color. So as you can see, that's been added, that highlighting in those rows. We'll do the same thing for the updates field. So same thing, new, old, like this. So this is the setting that we need to use. So just checking on the status. If it's new, use a different color. If it's old, use the same background color. So that will make sure that those updates are highlighted in this section. So now that we've created this, let's also work on adding that notification number on top of the bell icon to show how many new updates there are. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert another shape here, which will be a circular shape. We'll just uh, lock this aspect ratio. We'll change the width and height to 20 just to make it very, very small. We'll remove a few things like the border. We'll change the fill color of it to be red because it's always going to be red and we'll adjust it here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and let's see if we can add a text inside this. So we're going to enable the text here. We're going to add a text, as small of a text as we can. And then we're going to create a measure here, which will simply just give us a count of how many values in this update table is new. So what we're going to do new updates and name this one like this. And then we're going to start with a calculate just to count 
how many updates there are, doesn't matter which column, where the status is equals to new. For it to be taken here as a text, it needs to be converted into a text value. So we're just going to simply wrap it with a convert. I'm going to add a plus zero here to make sure it's always returning a value. And then we're going to adjust it to be a string value. Very simple. So now we're going to go to the FX conditional formatting option here. Choose that icon or that measure that we've just created. And that's what we're going to set as the number here for our bell icon. So as you can see, now we have a count of how many there are here. Now, if you have cases where you want to hide this red circle, if there are no new updates, you just need to make sure that you add a logic to the color of the circle to be transparent if there are no new updates. So you can do that directly from the format options here. But we won't go through that today because we will always want to show that there are new updates, at least in this iteration. Now that we have set up everything, I think we just need to bring in one more image. Actually, we'll just copy and paste this one. And we'll adjust the style of this to be a different icon, which will be the clicked bell icon here. Right. OK, so now let's work on the layers here, which will allow us to adjust and create groups so that it's easier for us to hide and show them based on bookmarks. So I'm just going to make some groupings here and rename the ones that we'll be working with. So this one, I'm just going to name this button clicks. And these two, the icon and the bell, I'm going to group them. I'll call this one bell. Name this one bell clicked. And then the table, the text box and the shape will group all of these three and will notification box, something like this. So what we'll want to do is basically hide and show them based on certain states. So just make sure that they're aligned here. We want to hide the bell. Just leave it like this. We'll need to make sure we select all of them. We'll open up the bookmarks pane here. Zoom in a little bit. And what we'll need to do is click Add. So this will be the first bookmark that we'll use. So clicked. We're going to change a few things here. So we'll just make sure that we are updating the selected visuals and hit update. So now we're going to change the state of these to be when it's hidden. Make sure they're all selected here. Click add. Change again to selected visuals. Click update. We'll name this one to default. OK, so let's test these out. So if it's clicked, we want to show the box. And then if it's default, it's just showing us the, the bell with the notification icon. So the clicked doesn't seem to have worked with the box. So we're going to just make sure that it's enabled, first of all. Make sure the notification box is selected. And we will go to the clicked bookmark and select update. That will make sure that the notification box is showing when this state is turned on. So default clicked. Perfect. So the last thing that we need to set up is just hook up those bookmarks into button clicks. So we're going to just use, for example, this bell icon here. Make sure that it's selected within the group. Go to action. And then under action, go to bookmark and then clicked. So when you click it, we'll simulate clicking by holding control click, which will open up the notification box here. And then we'll do the same thing for this bell icon here, where we go to actions, bookmarks, defaults. 
So now if you click that, it will just bring you back to how it was before. And there we go. So you now have a simple notification system that shows you what's been updated and highlighting what the, those new updates are. And that lets you bring it up or hide it when you click that icon. And that's really it for this video. So this is a very simple implementation of how you can add notification icons within your Power BI reports. So this solution is not a complete replica of the YouTube notification system because in Power BI, as you noticed, when I click that notification icon, the number of new updates don't disappear like it does on the YouTube. There is a solution that has already been created that allows you to clear notifications when you have viewed them in your Power BI reports. So I'm gonna leave it somewhere, a link to Jason's solution somewhere in this video where you can go and check it out. But he uses Power Automate in a very clever way that lets you update your table list so that it clears those new statuses to be old so that you don't show the notification icon within your reports anymore. So similar to how it works on YouTube. And that's really it for this video. Hope you now know how easy it is to create a notification icon system within your Power BI reports. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.